were hand on heart. Um, if any if any of them players came out, um, it wouldn't change any perception of anything within that change room. I can guarantee that. Hello, so we're going to be having a chat today about the Rainbow Laces campaign. I'm joined by Jordan and I'm joined by Joe. And we're going to go through and just have a chat about inclusivity within football and just looking at how LGBTQ players or fans can really be included in the sport. So to kick us off, Joe, I want to hear about your story. <laughs> that obviously blew up over the summer. Tell me a bit more about it. Well, what's there to say that hasn't already been said? So <laughs> <laughs> Tell me everything. Go from the beginning. Euro's amazing just before the pandemic and then during the pandemic got really comfortable with exploring my gender identity, realised that I'm non-binary and kind of hadn't had that experience really at a football game before. Mm -hmm. So going to the Germany game, not only was it first game back after COVID, but it was also my first going kind of as someone who's openly non-binary, wearing makeup and just kind of as my authentic self. And so just put a picture of kind of the day up on Twitter with just had a really nice time, absolutely no problems. It kind of got a bit of traction. Some England player uh, <laughs> quote tweeted. <laughs> yeah. So Jordan quote tweeted. Yes. Uh, and that was just great. Like. The amount of impressions, it's had like millions of impressions and I'm there going, I'm not used to this, I've still got work to do, I've got to turn my phone off now. I'm on celebrity. So at what point did you get involved in this then? When did you see that tweet? So I was just sort of having a look through uh, my, my Twitter and it popped up on my feed, like it got retweeted quite a bit I think, so yeah. I seen it and I just sort of really liked it, you know, it sort of struck a chord a little bit and uh, yeah, I thought I'm going to sh retweet it, share it, mm -hmm. and, and put a little message on there for Joe and mm -hmm. show me support, really, because I thought it was a, a really nice message. And like Joe said, there's a lot of negativity yes. surrounding many aspects. So it was a, it was a positive message, um, which, I, which I really like. The great thing from it was, A, having that support from someone who is in the team that you're all supporting. Yes. It shows that you've got allyship in the squad and anybody then at an England game who's like, oh, what are you doing about this? And it's like, well, actually, Jordan Henderson's fine with it. Why aren't you? <laughs> and that's a really powerful thing to be able to say to anybody who's trying to kind of diminish who we are as, yes. as people. That, sh that should be normal. You know, we shouldn't need to speak about that. That just should be a given. That should be the way it is. But unfortunately, I don't think that's the case a lot of the time. So little things I, c I can do, like wearing the, the laces, in Premier League, we'll wear the rainbow armband. Um, little things like that where I can show me support, I try and do um, a bit because I think it really is important that we, we do educate people um, so these situations don't occur. Russia, we actually had a really, really positive experience. Um, and I think a lot of England fans then saw us as almost proper England fans rather than just almost like a tick box activity. Mm. It's like, no, we're here because we actually really, really love football. Um, we wouldn't be travelling out to Russia if we didn't care about football and didn't want to follow the squad. Yeah. But then you, we had an experience in Portugal for the Nations League where we faced probably more homophobia in about two hours from England fans what? than we'd faced in like all of the games we've been to, including in Russia, from anybody. And there's that disparity that you can't always predict what crowd you're going to get but there is definitely it's moving in the right direction it's probably slower than i would like um, but there's positivity to take that it's it's in the right direction and and people are engaging a lot more and we've had people who've come up with with their friends and one of their friends has been a prat and starts trying to kind of mouth off and their friends will be like nah shut up mate and i think that is people are feeling more comfortable to call out behaviour that shouldn't yes. be acceptable in football. On to something more cheery, <laughs> something a bit more positive. <laughs> so Josh Cavallo in Australia coming out, technically across the world, this is huge news. Uh, it's something that people have been waiting for. Um, what did this mean for you? So frame it, because it has been said a lot that he's the first, yeah. which isn't accurate. Yes. Justin Fashionu was the first, and that takes nothing away from how big and wonderful this is, but let's not forget our history. 
I wasn't fortunate enough to be alive during Justin's playing um, days. So this is the first experience I've had of that kind of someone who we can look up to, who young LGBT people who absolutely love football can see someone like them reflected in the game. I mean, there was some negativity as well. Um, can't gloss over that fact. And obviously for me as a black gay man, Justin's moment was huge. Um, it's, it's something that's talked about a lot, but we do not see many black gay role models within the UK especially. So actually to see someone that did kind of take that leap um, and try to be the first and be on that stage and then ultimately end in such a tragic way is terrible. Um, so yeah, this does have huge, huge uh, implications across the world. What was it like for players uh, when this news broke that Josh had come out? Uh, what was being said? Yeah, very, very positive um, and a role model to, to a lot of people. Um, and, and like I said, hopefully we can help support in whatever way we can um, so more people feel as though they can be themselves and, and he is definitely a, a role model to follow and a very inspirational person. So obviously that case did happen in Australia. We are in the UK. So if we apply a UK perspective to it, um, what kind of pressure do you think there is for players who may be in the closet still uh, now that they're seeing this moment from Josh? They'll, they'll feel inspired by it for sure, whether or not the feel as though they can follow in his footsteps is another thing, you know, but all we can do is try and support that as much as possible because honestly, in the, I can, obviously I can only speak for the dressing rooms that I'm in, in England and Liverpool, but hand on heart, um, if, anyone, if any of them players came out, um, it wouldn't change any perception of anything within that change room. I can guarantee that with the players that I, or teammates that I have, and in fact it would make us probably Look up, look, look up to them even more and yeah. respect them even more, really. So again, it's about showing our support that if anybody doesn't feel comfortable or doesn't feel as though they can do that, we need to be there to make sure that they can and they feel as though they can and they're going to have full support behind them. I can only reiterate that that would be 100% the case for me personally and from all of my teammates that I play with. From the fan side, what I'd hope players would know is that there would be a lot of support. As a fan, what I care about just as much as any other fan is, are you going to do the best for the team? And if you're trying to hide who you are, you can't always give 100%. And I think if any fan is going to be like, oh, why do you need to come out? That's why. The thing that you as a football fan care is, are they giving their all on the pitch? And if you're telling someone they shouldn't come out, because it's not something you want to hear, well, they're not going to be able to give everything on the pitch if they're having to try and cover their tracks or make sure they say the right thing in the right way. Being in the closet is such a difficult acting job that you can't focus on everything all at once. And if you want people to give their all on the pitch, you want them to be their authentic self the whole time. Do you, Joe, do you think there's anything that the players can do more? So like, for instance, if I said to you, what could I do more? or my teammates, what could they do to help? Is there anything more that we could do? I think it's one of those of amplifying LGBT plus voices is a wonderful way of kind of engaging and getting that message out there. Because I can appreciate the amount of outreach work that we've done. A lot of people are worried about getting it wrong. And the best way of approaching that is everyone gets it wrong. Like, my friends get my pronouns wrong, but they know the best way of doing it is apologising, correcting, moving on. You shouldn't have to make it a, a big issue every time. And that is where education comes in. If you're not sure, ask. Just ask in kind of the polite way that you'd ask anything else if you're not sure about. You know, when we do sort of Rainbow Laces campaign and things like that, I think we can get a lot more, hopefully we can get a lot more players to support it, a lot more people talking about it, a lot more players talking about it. I can remember the situation in the Euros, there was an issue around Hungary and Germany. Um, in Germany wore the rainbow armband and Harry wore the rainbow armband in, in that game also when we played Germany. You know, I wore the laces to show my support and the team support again. So I think the more we can do that and the more we can show our support as 
as players. Um, I think sets a, an example and, a, and an education definitely to the younger generation that, um, that we're, we're all inclusive, basically. I think that's a key point as well. Ultimately, football is something that people enjoy. Yeah. Like, you want to watch it, you want to play it, you want to engage with it. But at the moment, there are a minority of people who are struggling to get their full enjoyment from it. So I think it is acknowledging, like, football players do have huge platforms. You see it on the women's team. You see on the, they're all the time they're talking about their experiences, and they can because a lot more of them are out about who they are. But at the same token, like, there's, there's so much more work to be done. And I think it is just about bringing just a portion of that education to an audience that doesn't necessarily expect it from you. Because you can. You can do it in a way that isn't preachy and doesn't feel like you're literally telling them off about something. But it's still just like, just giving them a moment of, think about this. Um, and I think if more people did that, then you would see a lot more of a push um, from fans to just understand people. I think that's what it comes down to. It's just literally just understanding. So yeah. the more of that, the better. Well, all right. Thank you so much for the chat. <laughs> it's been real. It's been deep. There's been some serious stuff, but ultimately it's been positive. Yeah. It's so good to just come together and talk about these things. They don't get talked about enough. So thank you for joining me, Jordan. No, thank thank you. you, Joe. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. And thank you as well.